Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another video in my Growing in Unity week and I am using this stamp set, uh, You Have Made a Difference by Unity and I'm only using this stamp set. I'm not even using all three stamps, just two of them. So as you can see here, it's another red rubber stamp and I am stamping this on some Arches Cold Press watercolor paper. That's my ink on three, blackout ink. And I do have to stamp it a few times because it's textured. Otherwise you get amazing crisp lines with a rubber stamp. And then I thought I would do a little bit of watercoloring because something different. So I took this flat brush here and I just sprayed my water sprayer on this glass mat and I just used it to pick everything up. And then I smushed each of my colors onto the white part of my glass mat and I am going to watercolor with them. I used worn lipstick, and every time I think of worn lipstick, I think of hot lips from MASH. I know, my mother, she was so obsessed with MASH that that's, we watched, I have seen every episode, every single one. But I also pulled in orange, uh, and it's dried marigold. I did use the brand new speckled egg, and then I also used bundled sage, and you'll see I also bring in some, I think it's faded jeans. And at first I'm just putting a really light wash of color on everything. I went over it with the water and then I added a little light wash of color. I dried it with my heat tool and now I'm going back and I'm adding a little bit darker, bolder color to my florals. Now this card is kind of a nod to Kelly Latavola. Uh, she... <laughs> She is one of my coloring idols, and um, she likes variant in color when she's doing her florals. She also is has been known to do this, where you watercolor, and then you go in and you kind of reinforce the bold color with your Copic markers, which I will do. But I wanted to show you all of the watercoloring first, because honestly, I didn't need to add the Copic marker. This image is so beautiful as it is. That had I just watercolored it, it would have been fine. I just really wanted it to be bold. So, worn lipstick and dried marigold, and I'm filling in the flowers. In the background, I have that speckled egg and that bundled sage. It's kind of just a wash at this point, and I'm just using, using my little round brush here to fill in my flowers. And I went outside the flowers. I was kind of looking for a messy watercolor look. I want this to kind of be an underpainting, I guess kind of style. So I, I, I let it go outside the lines, but I did it controlled. I didn't just slap the color down. I very much controlled where I put the color in the shapes that they were in and I made them look kind of organic and splattery and made sure that there was layers to these colors so that it wasn't all one tone. But the idea is that it's a messy watercolor. So then I needed to reinforce the background colors. So I'm using that um, speckled egg and that bundled sage, and I'm just reinforcing this background here. Each time I am drying in between all of these different layers, like I dried the panel after I finished the floral, and now I'm gonna add some more of this background tone. And I just wanted it to be built up and I wanted it to have lots of layers of color so it wasn't just one flat tone. So here you see I keep adding more and more. And then I wanted to soften the edge. So I took my sprayer and actually like kind of drew a line around my image here. Uh, and then I spread it out a little bit. And now I'm going to add some of that faded jeans I said I was bringing in and just dropping it in the puddles of water want it to disperse amongst the water and then I'm going to kind of mix it in and turn this clean water into watercolor and uh, kind of blend out the edges of this little watercolor scene a little bit and then splatter some of that blue. I just really wanted it to look super messy and then I dried the whole thing and I could have left it there but I decided to Kelly Latavola it. <laughs> And I pulled out just two pink markers and two orange markers. And that is, um, I used RV34 and RV32 for my pink. And I used the YR65 and the YR68, I believe, for my orange. Um, they're ba basically the same colors as the Distress inks. They were just bolder. Um, 
but I'm not going to go outside the lines. I'm going to very much stay inside the floral when I'm doing this. And I think this is a cherry blossom. I'm not coloring it like a cherry blossom, but it is what it is. And I decided that they were going to be these bright, bold florals. And, you know, it's my card, so I can do, you know, what I want. <laughs> and, you know, there's all sorts of inspiration. If you were to look this stamp set up on Pinterest, on Instagram, on Unity's website, you'll see all sorts of inspiration. They've always had such an amazing design team. They have guest designers every single week. This growing in Unity thing has been going on a few years, and we've talked about it in the last two videos how I've done this before. And we started talking about how I fell in love with Unity stamps, and I told you in the last video that I knew that I could tell you that I fell in love with them October of 2013. And I know that sounds kind of like a really random piece of information, but um, they used to do those Facebook posts and I commented and I won. And I, um, if you know, well, if you heard me introduce myself, my name is not Delaney, it is Renee. And this is Delaney Jane Cards. It's named after um, my daughter that passed away in 2013, which is why I can place the date and time of when I absolutely fell in love with Unity Stamps. Now, it was a very hard time in my life. It was probably the hardest time I have ever been through. And in the midst of all that, I won a stamp from Unity Stamps. And um, they were so very kind. And um, I just, it, I felt like I absolutely needed that win. And I really valued it. And since then, I have been a, a solid fan of Unity. There's not a day that goes by that I'm not at least flipping through the Unity stamps that are in the bins, bins on my shelf. Um, I just have quite a large collection and I don't think I could ever part with them. They are very sentimental to me because of the way that um, I received my, my first. I, I wouldn't say maybe it's not my first. I think I might have got one in a scrapbook expo but my first win I guess um, from Unity Stamps was a stamp set I will use it on Friday um, it's a, a girl she's like spray painting on the wall it's very cool um, grungy um, here I'm showing after I had everything even mounted on this great cardstock I needed more dimension and this is something Kelly Latavola used to do all the time I haven't seen it too much in her more recent videos but she used to add a drop shadow to everything and I was channeling her so I figured why not <laughs> so um my unity collection is probably oh gosh probably at least at least 150 stamps deep it the stamp sets deep it's it's a deep a deep collection and I have not gotten rid of anything and if I go to their site I can still find everything so this stamp set will be linked below make sure that you're commenting not only on my video here but on my videos all week and the coordinating blog posts because at the end of the week I will be drawing two winners to get the names to unity and you can win a prize pack and then you can rave on how you won <laughs> Uh, stamps from Unity Stamps um, in August of, or not August, in July of 2020. That can be your story. Mine is October 2013. Yours can be July 2020. Uh, just some Winka Stella on top of my floral here. That is a super old Winka Stella. I've had it forever. I just thought it would better with the florals. So here's a still shot of my card, and I would really appreciate it. Like I said, comment, like, subscribe. Um, you know, why not try to win? And thank you for stopping by. And as I always say, give cards generously. Bye.